we better get this show on the road so you can watch that game. So uh, welcome everybody to the uh, Town of Long Beach uh, Town Council meeting for January the 11th. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, 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 one nation, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. For all. Uh, through all the minutes, we have the uh, special uh, Zoom meeting minutes from November the 25th. We don't have our last regular minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve those uh, November 25th uh, minutes? I make a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, could it, aye. Aye. That's three. Aye. Four. All right. It's unanimous. Good. All right, uh, opening remarks, uh, I've got nothing. Um, Police Department report, Chief. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I would like to start by saying Happy New Year and thank you again to everyone for the, um, <clears throat> the choice in selecting me to serve the town of Long Beach. I'm just uh, very honored, very humbled to be a part of the team here in Long Beach. I'm looking forward to a lot of great things with the team. Um, within the town. So I'm um, very appreciative of Chief Bob Sokowski um, for everything that he did for me in the past several months and allowing me to have the uh, orientation last week with him was very, very helpful. Um, met a lot of great people in um, both the town of Long Beach, uh, Michiana and Doonland, actually all three towns. So that was nice to have the chief doing those introductions for me. Um, <laughs> with that, uh, last month in December, we had 68 calls for service. There were a total of 2,753 miles patrolled. Um, traffic stops, we only had two traffic stops. Um, when speaking to the chief, um, due to the COVID concerns, um, there was a little bit of reduction on that for traffic enforcement. We had five suspicious activity um, calls related to both vehicles and subjects. There were five ordinance violations that were looked into, um, six alarm calls, and three accident reports. We also had a call back on December 7th where we assisted the Michigan City Police Department with a shooting investigation where a female was shot on Highway 212 at the previous 212 Bargain Center. Um, our deputy did an excellent job backing up Michigan City on the traffic stop where the uh, suspect had fled from the earlier shooting. So. That was a great job um, of us backing them up. Uh, last week and this week, I had some conversations with the building commissioner. And also, you have seen an email I sent out today where we're going to be assisting them in verification on building permits. So we're going to do all we can to help the building commission. Um, lastly, just a couple in-house things. Over the weekend, I got the office all set up. Um, I've started uh, changing out some of our lighting in the building. I changed out 12 light fixtures over the weekend, putting in um, LED lighting, trying to help with some of the uh, utility costs in the building. Uh, my goal is to kind of make my way through the building and do some updates uh, with the help of both Deanna and Bill. Um, they've been helping me immensely uh, since I've gotten started here. So a big thank you to both Bill and Deanna for all their help as always. And then uh, next week, we'll be starting our in-service training, which is a state requirement for all of our officers, a minimum of 24 hours a year. Uh, we're going to obviously do more than that, but we'll be getting CPR uh, recertification, TASER recertification, and then a few other um, mandatory classes that we'll be attending at the Michigan City Police Department. And that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Now, Chief, we're very happy to have you on board. Uh, I understand that um, a couple of uh, people on our police department have contracted COVID. Yes. Um, and uh, with that, um, we had a, uh, oops, sorry, I got to let somebody in. Um, we had a supplemental um, infectious disease control policy that we passed back at the beginning of this uh, pandemic. Uh, and this was basically, uh, I think it came from the state. Uh, and we basically ratified it. However, the state policy uh, expired on December 31st. Um, I think that our two members of the police department who contracted COVID 
have been off and that's been since after December 31st, uh, I'd like to recommend to the town council that we extend that COVID supplemental infection disease policy uh, for at least another quarter. Um, basically what it does is if you contract COVID, uh, it gives you two extra weeks of vacation uh, at 40 hours of 80 hours total, uh, two, two, two weeks, 40 hours each. Um, I think that's probably only the, the compassionate thing to do, but. Um, I second it. Okay, so motion to second, discussion. No. Uh, Bob, uh, I have yep. a question for Mark. Who's doing the CPR training? Um, Officer Scott Combs with the Michigan City Police Department. He is a certified uh, CPR instructor. So he is going to be recertifying everybody. It's an eight hour course. Um, I also wanted to share with um, John Wall, since he's the fire chief, I spoke to Scott Combs. John, if you have anybody that needs to be recertified, um, he said that possibly he could get some of your guys into the class too, if uh, needed. We would just have to talk to him. Where's the class? Uh, at the Michigan City Police Department in their training facility, there are two CPR classes each week, starting this week through the first week of March. So okay. there's plenty, plenty of opportunities to get people in. I think they're only allowing six people a day to attend the class. The COVID. Well, Mark, just and keep this in the back of your mind. Bobby Petru, who was with the, uh, she was yeah, with right. Red Cross, and Red Cross. A lot of things. she and I are both certified to do that. I'm not sure if mine's up to date, but I would love to work with her again and she's super at it. So if we get shorthanded, she would be a good, a good link. Good to know, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we, we had a motion. Can I, can I add one thing, Bob? Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the policy that exists currently that we passed uh, includes two weeks of sick pay at full pay Yep. Uh, so the and an additional two weeks at two thirds pay. So uh, I don't. I, I I reviewed it, Bill. I didn't see the extra two weeks. There's, uh, there's, it's right here. I can re, I can read it to you. It's right. Take here. a look. But it looked to me like that extra two weeks is if you're taking care of a family member. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought it was I thought it was uh, I thought it was required. Okay. Then 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 I. I remove my comment. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Uh, police commission report, John. Yeah, we did not hold a police commission meeting this month. Um, Mark and I decided we we're going to push it to February in the interest of him getting his feet on the ground. So we really don't have anything other than what Mark's already reported as far as the police activity. So. Okay. We've got it scheduled for uh, early February, similar to what we've done in the past, but we, we decided to skip the January meeting. Okay. Uh, volunteer fire department report. I'll give you the numbers for year end here in two quick seconds. So these will be year, uh, year end numbers. Uh, to date this year, fire calls, we had 50 and last year was 52. So we're very on the mark, very close to the mark for this year as opposed as in comparison to last year. Um, fire calls for December were down considerably. We had a hazardous condition call and a false alarm call. Um, year to date turnout on fire calls is nine per call with that many fire or rather false alarms. I can read the detail. I don't know if it's really that critical for year end. Five fires, one trash fire, two brush fires, eight hazardous conditions. Those include gas leak, carbon monoxide, power lines down. Uh, three good intent calls, 31 false alarms. Our medical calls, we are at 84 this year. That's four over last year's 80 count. Um, those shake out in the month of December, we had four injury, I'm sorry, four sick persons and three lift assists. Uh, annual numbers to date, two full arrests, five heart attacks, seven respiratory, 12 injuries, 23 sick people, one seizure, four unconscious victims, one possible suicide, and two vehicle accidents, uh, along with, believe it or not, one, I'm reading this right, one drowning, 26 lift assists. Average number uh, turnout on medical calls is six. Our average response time for the year is on fire calls is 4.5 minutes, and on medical calls, it's 4.3 minutes. 
So that's the statistical report for the fire for the year. Okay. Any questions? Fire commission report. Uh, we did not hold a fire commission meeting. I will give you a little bit of information relative to what's going on for us. Uh, we're finishing up our annual proficiency test. That's a two component test that includes some practical testing, which we've already done on all the apparatus and SCBA and some of the other equipment that we use on a regular basis. This evening, they're doing the written test, which is part of the overall uh, test requirement. Our COVID protocols are still in place from the county. Mark's familiar with this. You know, we're, we're following the county protocols in terms of calls that do involve COVID cases. Uh, the fire department was, and I'm sure the police department's in the same boat. We, we're on the healthcare provider uh, initial vaccine uh, list. So most, many of our guys have already had them. I actually got my first one today because I was traveling last week, but I'll get my second one in February. So quite a few of the firemen have already uh, gotten vaccines. Um, we're getting them down at, at Franciscan and that's a great program. Um, we will be entertaining. We, 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 we had to postpone one of our meetings due to some travel conflicts last week. We will have uh, a meeting to, with the officers. We have a monthly officer meeting. We'll have a uh, review of the of the town contract and have that proposal for you for the February meeting. That'll involve hopefully an increase in the in the overall dollar amount. We were at about 28 up until now. That's about an 11 year old number. We'd like to get it up around 35, 38, somewhere in that neighborhood with the new contract. But we can review that when we present it to you guys. That's all I've got on the fire side. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Street department report, Tom. For the past month, we've uh, solved and plowed streets as needed. We're continuously checking out our trucks to make sure that they're always ready to go for the snow. Um, we started kind of cleaning up around the shop, working on uh, maintenance for all of our spring and summer equipment. And we don't really have a whole lot other than that because... Um, we used a, a good portion of December to get in some vacation time while everything was quiet. Damn. Any and questions? no snow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Street Commission report, John. Uh, for much the same reason that Tom was incognito through December trying to get set up for the snow, we did not have a Street Commission meeting this month. Um, we'll probably set one up for next month. This is going well. I like it. Park Board, John. And I would. Uh, Follow John's point, uh, no meetings, so no reports. How about the community center, John? Same thing. <laughs> wow, we're on a roll. Water oh, board, Mary Lou. Okay, so the water board met on December 28th. And just so you know, uh, I know that Bob LeMay, I know Dr. LeMay knows this, we're being audited by the state, which is okay with us, but then it's also triggered to, to audit the uh, town. So we're busy working on that. Um, just so you know, we've written to people about their, how much they owe and you're, so far no one has called because I'm in there on Thursday mornings. So when I, in our water department meeting, our president Rick Blank brought up the fact that I guess at one time with the taxes with the county, um, he wasn't taxed the correct amount, but they only went back three years. So that's what we're looking at and that's what we're recommending because we can we can actually say, okay, this is what you owe instead of trying to go back on a certain person for 17 years or, uh, but so far no one's answered. Uh, we went through Chris Willoughby and who I know is on here now and we're just waiting to hear back. Um, I don't, I feel like the Maytag repairman, they're not gonna call so, we're gonna to have to be uh, active with them. But moving forward, they're being charged the correct amount. Okay. And so we have a limit on how long we wait for that response? Well, you know what, We by next meeting, I'll know. And I'm in there on Thursday mornings and I will bird dog them and ask them you know, where we're at. And I really think probably three years is fair. I know the lady on Northmore is more than willing, as Bill will tell you, to have some kind of uh, thing, but the rest of them haven't called us. But I haven't given up, and we have a really super person in the water department, and I'm assured that she will handle it, because she's had a couple cases that I did we didn't have to write the letter to, and she explained it to them, 
And they're like, oh, okay. So we, from now on going forward, they're being charged. And, and it's been good. We're auditing that. It's probably gone on for a number of years. And um, we just want to make sure that everybody's, we're being fair and consistent. And yeah. so our next, uh, other than that, um, our next meeting is January 25th at 9 a.m. via Zoom. And everything's going good. Good. Okay. Any questions? Budget and finance bill? Uh, we have had no meeting since the 1228 meeting, but Pete Bivotes and I, I want to thank Pete because he has really been helpful. Um, we did have a meeting at the suggestion of the council and we reviewed our finances. And even though there's still some, some nervousness over, you know, what's going to happen in the future, we both agreed that, uh, had the money to uh, to have a uh, you know to, to uh, elicit a, a study from Haas. Hang on a minute, I just left. Was it? To have to elicit a, uh, you know to spend the money with Haas for the for the study for the uh, CCMG. So um, uh, that might uh, maybe I can solicit a a motion if um, if that serves the council to uh, to go forward with the study to. Uh, see what kind of costs we would be able to uh to be able to spend for uh, for the uh, for ccmg for 2021. well i'd move that we go forward with it uh, so i'd make that motion we investigate the cost for yeah, the study thirty five thousand dollar cost i believe estimate that we got from haas to finish the study so so that okay so john coker's made a motion i do have a second how much did you say, Bill? Thirty-five thousand. Okay, and then we get we felt that we had the money for that. We still may have to evaluate that, but we felt like we're we're comfortable with, uh, with that expenditure. And then it's three. It, we get reimbursed three to one. No, not on that. That that's just that. out of pocket. Okay, that that's, that I mean, allows us to apply for a three to one grant. Okay, and I yeah, guess so the, the question is: Do are we going to have enough money to ask for a reasonable amount of money to get the three to one grant. And if we don't, we can't, this study also could be used six months down the road when, when maybe we are more able to do that. Is that correct, Bill? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll second that. Any other discussion? All favor say aye. 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 All right. All right. Unanimous. Okay. Um, uh, there is a budget and finance committee meeting tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Yep. Uh, human resources bill. Uh, no meeting, uh, and we've covered the issue of the, of the uh, sick pay, so that's fine. We, we, have started the, we, we have started the study as of today. Um, all of the um, that salary study that has been approved at an earlier meeting has been... Uh, uh, has been has been begun, and uh, we have we. I just got heard from New Focus, so they're they're underway with a study for uh, for the salary survey. Okay. Uh, any questions? Otherwise, Building Commission. Uh, that's me. Uh, we met uh, on January the eighth. Um, I'll hit the highlights. Uh, a permit for a seawall repair slash replacement was uh, permitted at 3006 Lakeshore Drive. Um, they had some issues where their seawall had buckled. Um, they weren't actually able to put it in exactly the spot where the original seawall was. However, there was some concrete, a concrete seawall uh, placed over the buckled seawall and that's where the new seawall is gonna go in. Uh, and the feeling was that what they're asking for met the criteria of the Coastal Protection Ordinance. Uh, we discussed an issue at 2300 Lakeshore Drive uh, where there's uh, a deck and driveway built on town property. Uh, our attorney is talking to their attorney and hopefully we'll come to some resolution of that issue, uh, hopefully in the near future so that we can get going at on the uh, 
repairs uh, actually on the revetment that's going to be placed at stop 23. It's the property immediately to the east of stop 23. Um, we had an issue with pavy excavating uh, where a road was damaged, putting in a, a septic system. Also permit was not, was not asked for uh, until after they did the work. And Chris, I believe I forgot to tell you to write them a letter. The um, building commission decided to write them a letter saying if, if they do work again without a permit, their, um, what's the term, registration will be revoked. We wanna give them some warning. Uh, so Chris, if you could send them a letter, that would be great. Um, Chris is the town attorney in case anybody doesn't know. Um, and then um, the only other thing was we talked about asking uh, the police department to help uh, in terms of enforcement of permits and uh, Mark's already addressed that. So we're good there. Any questions? Okay, uh, next is the BZA report. Uh, BZA did not meet since our last meeting. Advisory Plan Commission did meet uh, on 1221, uh, we discussed uh, the proposed amendments uh, to the shoreline protection ordinance. Uh, that ordinance, uh, we had an ordinance along with two amendments. They were combined into one and then some changes were made to reflect some of the changes that have been made uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers and a few other changes were made. Those have been sent to the Advisory Plan Commission, which will take a look at those and decide if they want to make changes to that. Hopefully send it back to the Town Council. Uh, we discussed uh, maximum building size ordinance uh, was recommended from the Building Commission that the town uh, not allow any houses to be built greater than 3,500 square feet. Uh, in, that's not including the basement. Um, the um, APC uh, asked Chris Willoughby to check and see if indeed that's allowed and um, he'll get back to us and let us know if the state allows us to do that. The idea being we've got a lot of people combining lots, building huge houses, and I guess the question is, is that the kind of community we want to live in or not? Um, something to say for having housing stock that maybe young families would be able to afford. Um, but we can decide how we wanna go with that. Uh, solar ordinance was discussed. We had uh, a permit request to build a solar panel in a backyard. We did not have a solar ordinance. So we're trying to get that put together so we can decide what to do with that request. And finally, we looked at a right of way ordinance. Um, and that again will be addressed at our next meeting. Uh, but there was some good discussion about that. Uh, finally, um, Mike Gorman was reappointed as the APC representative to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And that was it. Any questions? So how long, wait a minute. How long is Gorman, because I remember that, but so what's his term? Three years or? Uh, it's a four year term. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and of course, um, those other, um, we have some other uh, positions on boards that are uh, open. We wanted to let, we decided last meeting to let that wait until we had a uh, replacement on the uh, town council for Nick Meyer. Uh, and that'll come up later on down in the agenda because I think we need to decide what we're gonna do with that. Um, so Bill, the building permit and revenue report. A building permit revenue report. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good, because I've, I've lost everybody but you, Bob. I'm a building permit revenue report for December 2020, 20 permits totaling $885,776 with revenue of the town, $9,935. 11 electric permits issued in December, 1,843 was the total, $184.30 for the town. One November ter uh, street cut permit for for hundred dollars of revenue. December legal expenses paid were twelve thousand six hundred twenty dollars and fifty cents, twenty seven oh two fifty to Austin Kuiper Jositis, 
$9,765 to Brazy Nelson and Janes and $153 to Knight Hoppy, Kernick and Knight. So do we have a motion to accept the, the reports and the uh, claims? I make a motion to accept the claims and the uh, permits. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Good deal. Okay, unfinished business. We're moving right along. Um, first thing we probably ought to discuss is, and it's not on the agenda, but I'm going to add it, and we need to discuss the procedure for replacing Nick Meyer on the town council. Um, we've had six people who've sent me emails um, wanting to be considered for the position. Uh, they are Mike Johnston, Zach Neff, Anita Remiges, John Hosty, Dr. Stefanos Rizos, and Anna Vortman. Um, five of them have sent me CVs, which I've forwarded to the town council. Uh, I assume the sixth one will be coming. Um, I guess, first off, at some point, we need to decide that we're going to stop accepting applications. Any thoughts on that, town council members? How about we stop maybe like Wednesday, and then aren't we going to have a special meeting for something? Well, uh, we, and just, yeah, we, just to start planning that, you, you need to do that. And then, you know, we need to give the council members a written notice of that meeting, even though it's, you guys are the ones setting it and the formalities of it. So we really need to do that sooner than later. And that's a 10 day period, whenever you guys decide, but you, you really need to get that, that, here, that special meeting set and hold it for that purpose. Okay. So, so Bob, did I, aren't, didn't you request like we do a special meeting for something? So I thought maybe that could be in it. Well, yeah, and, and we, I think we definitely need to have a special meeting for it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I think that would be fine. We can't do executive. It has to be a public meeting, uh, and okay. that'll be fine. Okay. Um, so you've made a motion to stop accepting applications on Wednesday. Let's make it Wednesday, just in case people watch the meeting tonight. And it gives them a couple of days to get their resumes okay. in. I think maybe, that sounds fine. Maybe update this website if it talks about, uh, isn't there a message on there to invite to that? So maybe set the deadline yep. on the website. Yep. I can. Bob, do you want me to let Meg Collins know, or do you want? Yeah, to? that'd be great. Okay. If you if you can let her know to we put will. that on there that it's done on Wednesday. Okay. And that's the thirteenth. Yep. Okay. And so then, um, and I will of course forward CVs that I get. And then I guess the question is: is we schedule a special meeting, and Chris, that has to be ten days out after notification is that right yeah we we need to have at least a 10 day a minimum of 10 days but yeah like i said we, we really need to get going on setting that meeting all so right bob, so bob yeah. when i tell meg let's make it like five o'clock on wednesday like the end of the day that'd be fine sure okay. and then we we probably need to then tonight set a time for that meeting so that it can be posted um anybody so, got their calendars the handy Chris, 10 days out from today or? Uh, from when we post it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to have a minimum, you need to have a 10 day period from the notification to the town council. Okay. So just okay, no, 10 days up. out from Wednesday? No. Well, no, it's, 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 whenever we can get it posted. That's right. So uh, it, you could. If we if we got notice out by Wednesday, which we could accomplish, I mean, what about Monday the twenty fifth? Does that give enough time? We could get. Does, um, and it's a Monday. It's a Monday. Does um. Okay, that that can work. Does Deanna have to put it in the paper? Yeah, that's the posting. Okay. Yeah, we we, we got to get a public. We have to have a legal a legal notice. Okay. Yeah. Which we have plenty of time for that. The 10 days is ultimately, and again, it's absurd, but it's to the town council. So I will work with Bill to give the statutorily required notice to the town council members. But I will work with Bill and help prepare that. But it really just sets date time, which is, again, selection of a replacement um, council member. Okay. okay. But, but Chris, does. I'll, I'll text does Megan in the morning. Excuse me. Does that not have to be? Does that have to be a legal notice in the legal notice paper, or does it have to be noticed just in the uh, 
you know, around town. We will do both, but I'll help. I'll help you set both of those up. You and Deanna. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. We want to do that at seven p.m. Seven p.m. on the twenty-fifth. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go with that. Uh, then I guess the next step is to decide what exactly we're going to do at this meeting. We've got six candidates at least. Um, do we want to have any kind of an interview process during this meeting? And and bear in mind, this has this is a public meeting, so it'll be like this meeting. Uh, and I guess we could ask the candidates to, to tune in if we want to conduct interviews at that meeting. Your thoughts? Uh, one other suggestion as you guys are thinking about that is, is potentially just having a workshop via Zoom and invite them to that, which would be an open, open meeting or another. Not that you want to have tons of meetings. Zoom makes it a little bit easier under these times. So the week before, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, something before that Monday, so that that Monday meeting is strictly to to handle the business of that, because you know six six candidates might might take a while. But that workshop has to be public, also, right? Yeah. Anything you do is going to have to be public. Yeah, and so it would have to be noticed, have to be posted. So I guess. You know, if we call it a, we call have a, a workshop and a meeting, or just a meeting and a vote at the end. Or you could probably. just yeah, and set you could set six o'clock for the workshop prior to, and have each candidate um, give their spiel a little bit about themselves, and have a little you know, give and take from the council and seven o'clock. I'm sorry. Let's buy little... our experience with the. Like question and answers. Yeah. Judging by our experience with the police uh, hiring, police chief hiring, I, I don't know. You're not going to knock out six candidates in an hour. I can tell you that. Uh, do we want to make it a longer meeting that night, or should we do two? I, I would. I would look at it as similar to what we all had to do when we ran for office a year and so many months ago. You know, we were at a public forum. It was basically a debate or a discussion on what you want to call it. And wouldn't this be about the same thing? We'd have the five or six candidates get up there and they would tell a little bit about themselves like we all had to do. And then if anybody has any questions, we can ask them and have a time limit on everything. And I think we could do it in, in, in an hour and a half because if we gave each of them five minutes. It's not like when we interviewed the police chief because they, we had all kinds of questions for them. So I would think we could get, get it accomplished and I'm pretty free whenever you guys want to have a meeting. You want to move it up to 6 p.m. That way we aren't going to get, go past anybody's bedtime. You know it. All right, let's, let's go at 6 p.m. then. Okay, on what date? The same date, the 25th. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, and then at the end of that meeting we can and if it runs over, is that public then too? It, it'll, it has oh, to be public. Well, then yeah. that's perfect. Then if it runs over, we're fine. Okay, let's go 6 p.m. Is everybody okay with that? And that's the 25th, yep. which is yep. Wednesday. Okay. All right. I think we're good with that. And uh, I'll let you know okay. how many more candidates we have by then. So just, just to clarify then, what's the procedure? So we're going to do this dog and pony, everybody gets to say something, and then we have to make a vote that night about who we want to accept. Is that how that works? I think that's the way we should plan it. I think they could make a presentation of maybe maybe give them a two minutes or something, and then we can ask questions. Um, and I guess we figure out we'll, we can kind of wing that as we go. I guess they could all give a presentation. Probably not fair to to have make somebody go first and answer the questions. Maybe we kind of do kind of a, everybody gives their presentation and then we kind of go around the horn with questions. That sounds kind of, awesome. kind of similar to what the League of Women Voters did. Yes. But then we, we're gonna vote that, the four of us, and then whoever, if we need Bill, then it'll be the four of us that'll vote that yep. evening. Right. Yeah. That sounds is good. That, is that legal, Chris? Is that how it's supposed to work? Uh, it's really you. It is this. It's within the legal parameters. There isn't anything. It, I'd I'd prefer to have the uh, 
the interview process a different day than we have the vote. We could do that. Well, does the vote have to be public? It can yes, be. it's got to be public. Everything's so, got to be public. So going back to Je Mr. Coker's, uh, yeah, kind of like a candidate's form, right, in a workshop right. environment. It, and, and maybe, it, just throwing one other thing out there, I don't know that you want to have canned questions, but maybe you could circulate those amongst the candidates before then of, you know, be prepared to discuss these or you want to come on the spot, whatever that is, um, you know, maybe just, a, I think we call it a workshop and it'd just be a candidate's form. And so, Chris, the, the um, notification of us that has to be 10 days. That's for the 25th. So that'll be handled. Okay. So we really could have a workshop. So we really could meet at seven on the 25th just for the vote and maybe meet uh, anytime before that for this workshop. Just, where Just keep in mind, we have to have notice, public notice of that meeting. So 48 hours at least. So, so yeah, it like could be next Monday, it could be Wednesday, I, whatever you guys want. I, it, well, it really can't be Monday, right? That's APC, so. Yeah, but how about, uh, how about like, hey, Friday, Friday's not a big day during COVID. Um, Friday evenings, everybody got big plans for Friday evening? What, what day, Bob? The 22nd. Oh, no, I'm free. Uh, I think we almost all so would that be like a workshop or yeah that would be the, that would be the interview portion oh okay all right that'd be like the league of women voters thing okay does that sound okay to everybody sure the only problem you might have would be getting the candidates all there on that night we, we ought to probably run it up the flagpole with them on a friday night i don't know i mean hope hopefully they'll all be there but you got some people working in chicago and all that kind of stuff so i don't know how that shakes out for them we could do thursday if you want I mean, that might be more free, although I don't know who's going out on Friday nights anymore. Nobody. <laughs> I'm not so much worried about going out as I am getting home from work. I, I know a couple of those, I read through those resumes, a couple of them are Chi-Town employment, so I, I don't know. And Chris, well, let's just, run it up the flagpole and see if you can't, there's no sense doing it if we can't get most of them there. That's all I'm suggesting. I like John's idea about two sessions. I just think we want to make sure we get them all there. That's so how about this? We have a special meeting on Wednesday. How about somebody between now and then contact them and see yeah. if they can make it? Okay, so we're talking Wednesday the twentieth. No, no, we you have a special meeting this Wednesday, right? Right, uh, for thirteenth. The... Oh, right, right. Okay. I'm saying between now and then, maybe somebody could contact those six candidates and confirm the date, and that way, then you still have plenty of time to set that that date depending okay. on what it is the following week. All right, so I'll try and confirm some dates with them. You know, Thank it could you. ask if they need a weekend for that session or something, I don't know, but let's check with them. I like that idea. Um, yeah, I guess we're all free on weekends too, for that matter. Uh, why don't I see what the deal is? Everybody's pretty much free? All right. Okay. All right. So for Sounds right good. now, you're not meeting on Monday the 25th at 7. No matter what we are. Right? Yeah, we're meeting on Monday the, the oh, 25th for sure. That And that's going to be at 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's happening. And then I'll try and figure out a time when the candidates can hopefully all be there for this forum. Okay. Thanks. And so all, we're talking Zoom on all of them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, and oh, and Chris, the other question I had is as far as this uh, on the 25th, when we vote, so we have, say, say we have six people, we have six candidates, and if one candidate gets two and two get one, the one who gets two wins. Is that right? It's not like any kind of special voting between two or anything like that. It's these are the candidates, whoever gets the most vote wins. Is that correct? I guess I'm just wondering procedurally how this works. Or it's like Georgia where you have to get the... <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to have to have a majority for a candidate, so... It has to well, be a majority. Well, when... it's going to have... Somebody's going to have to get three votes? Yes, let me verify. But yes, I believe that's okay. the case. Yeah, maybe so, just let us know how that yeah, works. That's, yeah, that's... I, I understand your point of the different candidates, but... It, if, if there's not, a, there isn't any exception for selecting 
a replacement. And generally, the, the minimum is a majority of the elected council. So, wouldn't, wouldn't the procedure be one of us would move to nominate candidate number three sorry. or whoever, and yeah, somebody I know, would that's second right. it? And, or maybe if nobody seconded it, then that person is out. Then somebody else make another motion. If that gets seconded, then you vote. That's right. Yeah. It's it's not going to be like an election where you have the top, yeah. you know, if there are multiple. That's right. It it it, it is a majority. And well, it will Chris, be. if it's two to two, isn't Bill the tiebreaker? Yes. Okay. Potentially so, the kingmaker, as they say, right? Yeah, or, but or but queen. but would okay. I, the confusing for me is that you know, having done the executive recruiting thing, is that is that I, I would love to have it down to two candidates, you know, where we'd have a vote with the four, you know, and but I don't know how to I don't know how to accomplish that really, and and to do it legally, that we we go from four to two, and then we go with those two get get voted two, but maybe that's not possible. It is not even in a in a normal circumstance where you have an appointee, um, the best you could do is knock out one. Yeah, okay. that's, not, that's not applicable here. Okay, so Chris, you're going to check and see exactly procedurally how this has to work, right? I, I will <laughs> confirm, but I, right now it, it is as John said. But I I will make sure okay. that you guys have procedure wise. So going into that, you will be aware. And prior to our um, I'll prepare a memo so that you can convey it to the candidates as well. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, town's executive order update. Um, so right now the community center, the, the Y is open. Yep. The uh, yoga classes are open with limitations. Yes. And um, Otherwise, I think uh, Jim Diener's office is open, but he has just one client at a time. And I think that's pretty much how much we're open, right? Julie Sosa is, has, across the hall from Jim, has one client at a time. Okay. And she's always been able to operate. She gives everybody a, you know, a, 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 a thermometer test and everything else. Before they come in, and they're all, and they work, they wear masks during the whole time, and she just gives one, one client at a time. Well, and I'm, Bob, I will report that the Y, because I'm there at probably six thirty in the morning. They take our temperature. I'm not inside there because I'm walking, but they come out and check on us, and then to make sure we have our mask on. And at the most, I've seen three people in there at six thirty, so okay. they're enforcing it. Well, and I'm comfortable with that. And frankly, I, I don't think that we should um, drop our guard down at all. I think, uh, right. I mean, I, I, my biggest concern is, is it seems like a lot of people are getting more and more comfortable with 3,000 people a day dying. And I think this would be a really bad time to, for us yeah. to fall into that. Actually, the lady came out the other day and she said, I'm just checking on, there's just two of us walking. I'm checking on the walkers. I said, because we're old. She said, no, to see if you have on your mask. I said, oh, no. Oh, all right. Good deal. So anybody want to make any, I guess we need to update that executive order, right, Chris? <laughs> um, no, because the council voted last time to extend that indefinitely after you had okay. the ventilation fixed. So you're good then. Okay, so Bill, let's just leave that on the... Um, agenda for every meeting until hopefully yep. this is over. Uh, and also, if you could, that, that issue we had as far as the uh, uh, sick vacation, the, the sick pay yep. for people, we need to make sure that comes back at the end of the quarter, Yep. Uh, since we extended it for the quarter. Um, sewer update, uh, I think we're planning on putting sewers in come fall. Uh, I don't think anything has changed there, has it? No, nope. moving on. Okay. Stop 24 project is completed. There are some things that we have to do to make sure that the coastal grant people, um, that we've satisfied the requirements of the coastal grant. Um, John? I, uh, the uh, Save the Dunes lady is trying to schedule a meeting with me on Friday. She'll give us give us an idea about exactly what the 
the follow-up needs to be. So I'll, I'll be able to report back the next meeting, but she, we couldn't put it together for this first week, but we'll have it, we'll supposedly have a meeting uh, sometime in a couple of weeks. Oh, John, when I drive by there, there's things new that look like, uh, I well, if you are in manufacturing, it looks like we called them pigs. It looks like maybe they're stopping water flow or something. They're black. They're sandbags. Okay, but they're in, okay. Is that to stop the water from eroding? Yeah, they, they were placed so. during the construction of the project, and rather than pull them at the end, which we they could have done, we wanted to leave them in there in the interest of slowing the flow from the water during the winter months. Okay. And then once the the vegetation has a chance to establish itself, which should happen in early spring, then we can pull them. So really. You know, we looked at it with Tom Dolph as well, and he, the plows are able to keep away from it. It's just a better way to keep the erosion down while the, the grass gets a chance to grow and the vegetation gets a chance. Okay. No, I, ju I just noticed them yesterday, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what those are. We put those around on uh, oil-based machines to keep the oil into the system instead of in the water. Those are a little different, Mary Lou. What you're talking about are absorbent. These are not absorbent. They're strictly a flow-through sort of thing. They let the water go through, and they... They keep the sediment back so but okay. it's yeah okay um so stormwater utility we have a public hearing scheduled for wednesday at 7 p.m okay yep, 7 p.m and and we've got we've got both the ordinance for the the second reading for the ordinance for the uh uh for the formation of the stormwater utility and then the second reading of the ordinance for the 15 dollar monthly charge for owners of property in, in, uh, in Long Beach. There was okay. a, uh, a request made, I think, somewhere along the line, Bill, and I, can't, I don't remember who talked about it. Maybe Mary Lou was going to do a little homework. Are, do we have enough room on the water bill to throw that on there? Or are we going to be OK? Uh, Lynn's looking at it with Civic, which is, has the software system, and we think we can get it on there. If not, on the Michigan City, when we get a, uh, our bill for the sewage, Theirs is an eight and a half by 11. If not, we may have to switch to that, but I think we can get it on there. Lynn's was checking into it. And Lynn's the lady in the water department. So once we pass this thing, we're able to start collecting, Bill, do you think the next, the following month? Is that how that works? Yes, I, I'm hoping so. So the, the sooner the faster, but I need, need to announce the fact that we need to make sure that we need both Johns and a, and a Mary Lou at that meeting, because we only have Four members, and I think I'll be there. Now. Is, Mr. Gord's willing. Our our council president is going to be winging his way out of town. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. John, are you going to be there too, John Coker? On the thirteenth. Wednesday. Two days from now. Good. Yep. yep. Sounds yeah, like we got three. We're good. John, there's not much going on Winnemac. You can zoom in on us. I'm, hey, I'm still. <laughs> Still trying to make a living <laughs> briefly, but are you yeah. on fast time there or slow time? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on uh, fast time. All right, you can fit us in then. Yeah. Okay, uh, I haven't missed a meeting all year. I know. Good. Uh, the proposed golf cart ordinance, I think we were going to set up a meeting. Uh, between some council members and the um, and some representatives from the country club. I don't remember who was gonna meet with the country club. Uh, I know I am, and uh, I mean, everybody's welcome. We, we set it up with those guys at 10 o'clock on the 19th. That's the, the date right now. So, you know, any, you're all welcome. It, basically, they just wanted to present their points um, relative to the fees and anything else that was involved in registration for their people, that sort of thing. John, okay, did well. you, and you know, Mark helped us with some of that information too. Did you get the information I got from other communities? Yeah, we did, Mary Lou. And it's strictly going to be up to us how we want to play those cards. Um, I appreciate all your homework on that. I guess, I don't know if we want to discuss it now or you want to wait until after the, the country club meeting, but, uh, you know, they, they bristled a little bit at the magnitude um, that was suggested originally. And I don't know if that was you know, cast in concrete. We just, I think that's the major sticking point. What do we want to charge? Um, it so seems what time's your meeting on the 19th? Is it on the website too? 10 uh, o'clock, I said. 
It's 10, 10 o'clock on the 19th, Mary Lou. I, I don't know that it's a public meeting per se. Oh, okay. oh, that's okay then. I don't have to well, be. Maybe, yeah, no, so the deal is, is only two of us council members can be there. So we need to figure out which two it's going to be. Uh, I'm okay so Mary, with it. If you want to, Mary Lou, you want to be there, that's fine. Uh, just let me see what the, I did some, okay, then that's a Tuesday. I can do that. I did some, I did Michiana. Help me with this, John. I did Michiana. I did Grand Beach. Chesterton. Chesterton, and I reached out to a couple others on what they do, and why they why they do it that way. So I'm I'm okay with it, and I'm, I'm okay. okay with whoever wants to be there because I copied everybody on the committee, and I copied, I think Brian Hogan and maybe Annette. Okay, why don't you two do that, and then you can report to us. Okay, so good? John on the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. I'll just set up, a, I've got the capability to set up a Zoom, Mary Lou, we'll just do it that way, I guess. Okay, perfect, thank you. I'll check with them and they, 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 that was their preferred time and date, so. Okay. Good deal. Uh, tree ordinance, I think the Natural Resources Committee wanted to take that back and simplify their ordinance. The thought was that it was kind of creating quite a bureaucracy. Uh, John, you have something on that? Just uh, Tom Dolph and I had some conversation. I know Tom's still on here. We'd like a little bit more time to pound through that. There are some issues relative to procedure that Tom needs to be comfortable with. Uh, you know, right now he would come to the council if there were any big issue. If we have another review by the by that committee and or the street commission, I mean, it, we don't want it to become cumbersome. So. And there's also some movement afoot to maybe get the town certified in some way. Bill's a little bit familiar with this, although we're waiting until um, things calm down after the end of the year sorts of things with the accounting. But I think there may be some benefit to getting the town certified to a certain degree. And then maybe even Tom will get some credentials. And so there, it's still a little bit of flux. I, I don't want to antagonize the committee, but I think if we can have another month or so to get our feet firmly on the ground, would be better to before we finalize it. Good. Okay. Are you talking about certification like a tree, town tree? Uh, yeah, like Michigan City, <laughs> Winnemac, all these towns. The, the one that tree, we have tree right city now. Is, I think they call it tree city. Yeah, I'm not, I, I wish I could answer you more definitively, John. I think there's a certification of the town per se, and, and I'm not sure if it's exactly what you're describing. A lot of those, some of these bigger towns have a, hired arborist sort of a thing i don't think we're going down that road no you don't have to get up you don't have to you just have one that you can call every now and then come well in. actually a lady tom, over in uh chesterton i think that does tom wants night. to get certified as an arborist and i'm encouraging him yeah that'll work yeah in cool. terms of the ordinance we just have to kind of make sure yeah. we don't get too crazy with it and the, the, the committee did a great job Really, it's only regulating the town, the trees on the town's property is all it regulates. And we just have to make sure we don't hamstring time and his efforts during the years. So, yep. Okay. Uh, volunteer fire department agreement. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier in the evening, uh, we, we will have a meeting coming up in the next week or so. We hope to have, not hope to, we will have a presentation at our next council meeting of a proposed new contract. It won't vary too much from what we have. We're going to be removing the Dunlin language because we no longer cover them and uh basically it, it'll involve the the projected increase in the annual commitment by the town to the fire department right now we're at about 28 in total and we'd like to get it up a little bit because we lost the doing the money and also it's an 11 year old contract so okay uh, ccmg 2021 application we talked about uh how we were going to go ahead and hire the engineers uh, is there anything more we need to do right now with that? Do we have to have that application in by sometime this month? It's late January, John, and I'll, I'll check with Haas. I'm, I'll try to check with Haas before the budget meeting. I think I can. I'll try to text him this evening. He's usually good about getting back to me. When I texted him after that last special meeting we had, he said we may still have some time. I'm not sure if that window has closed or not, but before we go too much farther i'll hopefully i'll have a, something i can talk about at the budget finance tomorrow morning and and we'll figure out whether we can still still get it i don't know if you've been paying attention but michigan city got into kind of a political brouhaha over their ccmg application um 
some of the people on the town council or the city council didn't quite understand the process. They, they thought they could pick and choose which streets. Basically what happens is once you certify your streets to a certain level of, of uh, deterioration and you have to use a kind of a very specific process to identify the ones you include in your application and then you have to only do the ones you include in your applications. Right. But I think there's still time, but the window's narrowing. It's... Well, it's not like you, you put it together on Tuesday and submit no, it Thursday. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, you're exactly right. Hopefully he's still okay because I wanted to say that he told me it was something on the order of January 29th. So hopefully he's yeah, still okay. Sounds about right. Okay. All right. Uh, new business. I have none. Public comments. Anybody have public comments? Raise your hand. I'll look for you. Bob, it's Anita Ramages. Mm -hmm. Yep, Anita. Uh, tw 2300 Floramond in Long Beach. Number one, just to clarify, the park board um, combined our November, December meeting and we had it November 30th. So technically we did hold a December meeting. Um, my second question is, I only heard six, five of the six names uh, running for who have submitted information. Zach Neff, me, Anna Vortman, Mike Johnstone, and Mr. Risby. I didn't hear the sixth one. No, not Mr. Mr. Risby. Mr. Risby no, did, did not apply. Mike Johnstone. Close. Mike Johnstone, Zach Neff, Anita Ramages, John Hosty, Dr. Stefanos Rizos, and Anna Vortman. Okay. Um, will the town council meet prior to um, what you're talking about at candidates forum to talk about disqualifying anybody, whether it's due to litigation or the fact that they were involved in a prior um, election? And I yeah, I don't think any of those things are disqualifying. And my other question is, I, I'm a little, I, I don't under, I, I guess maybe this is for Chris that we have to have a public forum, but I don't understand why questions wouldn't be submitted. And if the council are the ones making the decision anyhow, what's the point of a public candidate forum? Well, the, the town council can't meet in private. We, 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 there's public, what's the word for it, Chris? The, there's a law that says the public, yeah, open door laws. Open, open door law, yeah. And, and so, if there's a concern about giving a question and what the order would be, wouldn't it make sense to submit a couple of questions to the candidates and answer them at the public forum? I mean, does it have to be opened? I, I understand it's public, but um, that's just a comment. Well, I think. And the council, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. So I was going to say, I think ultimately the council is trying to take the task of being as transparent and open as possible and kind of handling it, but a little bit more of an expedited way that each of them went through in the process. So, um, you know, ultimately doing it in a public form is required. Uh, so there's no getting around that. It just seems to me that it would be fair if the questions were given to the candidates and where they were able to answer ahead of time. And my next comment is, um, I, I might caution, or it's just my personal opinion, but watching the many, many council meetings that I've attended and watching particularly on Zoom, it might behoove um, council members to watch a meeting after it's over and to maybe temper themselves in terms of interruptions and um, it, it might be just something that the can that the council members might want to do because of the, the council meeting sometimes can be very, very disjointed. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments? Hi, Donna Cavanaugh here. Can you hear me? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, if you give me a few minutes, I have a couple of comments and a question. So first of all, um, is Mark Yagelski still there? Mark, are you still there? 
Mark Swistak, I'm here. Mark I'm here, Donna. Mark Swistak. Okay, so I, on behalf of all of the citizens I've talked to of Long Beach, we're so happy that, and we want to welcome you to the police department here. Um, and I'm, I've been asked to speak for many people that are full timers because, as you know, uh, I was on the 2019 Michigan City Citizens Police Academy. I graduated a year ago. Unfortunately, because of the COVID, they're not doing it in 2020. It was a wonderful experience, and you spearheaded that. I learned a lot from you, and we're very grateful that the town council has chosen you as a replacement for Bob Soltowski, who we, we really appreciate his service. So I wanted to make that comment. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, And Donna. also, yeah, okay. And the second thing is that um, I do really uh, appreciate what the town council has been doing. I tried to get on um, last month at, to thank you for your service during this very difficult time. Uh, I've been a full-timer here off and on since 1956 when I was three years old. And I have to tell you, I've seen a lot of changes in Long Beach in this area, but I'm very grateful to all of you that have put your time in. Um, and I, I appreciate that. And then the last thing I wanted to say to you, well, one more comment. Um, I, w I started the Michigan City Tree Board and then I was brought up by the governor to be on the state board, uh, which has now been disbanded because of funds. If the tree board needs any of my um, help uh, with their uh, putting their, their ordinances, et cetera, together and to find out how to become a Tree City USA, et cetera, I'd be happy to help them. And finally, my question to the town council, um, Living at Stop 21 is heartbreaking. Uh, we are the, the one stop that's, the, I feel like we're in a war zone. Uh, I know what you're doing uh, because I also spotlighted it last year uh, to help save the uh, Lakeshore Drive part going into Avondale. But can you tell me, I've been watching the progress. I give all of the people working on that a lot of chops. It's very difficult. Can you tell me all of those steel pieces that are going down on our beach, are they going to be there forever? Is it temporary? Uh, can you give me an idea of what's happening? And thank you very much. I'll sit back and listen. Go ahead, John. As far as steel pieces, um, Donna, the only steel, it's all been a, a revetment. So there's stone revetment and then this modular revetment that's been placed down there. Um, if you're referring to the steel sheet piling wall to the west, which is on the private owner, that will be pulled. That was the design. If after the revetment went in, they were going to pull the old steel wall. So that's a great improvement in terms of the public access uh, beach, so to speak, because that once that wall is pulled, it'll be considerably farther landward than it was before. In terms of right at stop 21, what we've, what we've done is we've introduced some steel H sections as vertical members. I think there are three of them down there and the idea right. is they will support a stairway for public access. There's, you can't, we've had limited success trying to put wood stairs in at the stops. They float away and you can't adhere them to anything. So we decided to put some vertical steel piles in so that we can attach stairs to them, much similar to what's going on at 26 and some of the other stops. So that's what those steel members are for. They're, they're just strictly for the stairs and for the future uh, stair installation. Thank you for that. I, uh, I've been watching closely. I bought some sandwiches down to some of the guys. I, I just really uh, feel like it's very heartbreaking. I'll just say this to other people who may be listening uh, to this on TV or uh, later on. Uh, stop 21 was always the most desirable stop to buy a house because you could run a mile before you hit the water. So it's just really shocking to me at this stage in my life to see this, but I am optimistic. I've seen it happen at least three times in my lifetime where the water recedes and the beach comes back. So John, thank you for that. I'm very, uh, I'm very hopeful and I appreciate all the work that they're doing 
uh, on behalf of all of us here at Stop 21. Thank you. Any other public comments? Any council comments? Claims approval bill. Number 17768 through 17796 checks uh, totaling $101,453.01. Motion to approve. I make a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Bob. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hope your team wins. Thanks. <laughs> Want to know what the score is? I no. <laughs>
I'm going to go ahead. How small this, I couldn't believe how small the syringe was. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> Make you makes you realize how easy it is for those Russians to poison somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to stick you. Pretty I'll amazing. You, Fran Franciscan did a nice job though. They have a, a great system out there. They move you through really quick and uh, I was very pleased with it. That's good to hear. I'm glad to hear we're gonna be able to get the second dose. They've already scheduled, I'm sure they did with you guys too, but yeah. The way the national press is talking, they're gonna dilute it down and just do one or something. That doesn't sound Sound right? No. Yeah, it's kind of taking a unnecessary chance, especially since they're having trouble giving the vaccine that they've got. You know, that that seems kind of nuts to me. But hey, what do I know? Cool. Well, I got eight thirty. So, um, Peter, you on here? I see his name. Ask to unmute. I'm going to ask to unmute. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Um, so, who are, who's who's running this meeting? They can start any time. Okay, this is Pete. Um, thought we'd spend most of the time here talking about what we talked about last time, which was where do we stand financially. Um, I sent everybody um, a um, email that talked that showed a cash flow analysis and with some verbs along with that. Um, just to summarize what's going on here and how this all ties together, um, the cash, <clears throat> the cash, first of all, every month, the uh, at a council meeting, the uh, financials for that month are printed and presented to council members. And that is by fund. Everything in the state of Indiana is run by fund, um, general fund, MVH, that sort of thing. Uh, and the purpose of the financials is to give a picture of what has occurred in the previous month. It also contains a year to date figure that responsibility of the council that any it's available to anybody who wants to see it. Um, the reason that that I did this analysis based on cash because cash is king. Um, you don't get to develop any budgets if you don't have enough cash coming in or in the house. Um, every year, as you know, the budget starts somewhere around uh, June. Uh, technically, it's complete by the end of August for final review and that sort of stuff and, and, and usually has to be done somewhere October, November that it has to be signed off, submitted, posted, all that kind of stuff. But the reason cash is important is that uh, um, you start with a balance of cash in your account and if you don't have the uh, tax receipts or the sales tax receipts or the um, various receipts that show up that cash balance is not replenished uh, for a town like Long Beach there is no uh, real way to enhance the taxes the tax receipts uh, there's no licensing fees there's nothing of that nature that, that the town can manage so the town really reside drives primarily by um, uh, tax receipts and on the, on the memo I sent I gave you an example of how important tax receipts are for like the general fund. Uh, the general fund is impacted every year about uh, 50, 50 to 55% of the money that comes into the general fund uh, is the result of uh, property tax receipts. And the general fund is the major fund. It's the one that has the most latitude, the ability to spend in any way that the council sees fit. Um, MVH, PARC, and CCD are the other three funds that are um, supported by taxes. Uh, they're more heavily supported by taxes. Those three are in the vicinity of anywhere from 90 to 99 percent supported by tax receipts. So any impact on the tax receipts has a great 
uh, impact on what the town can spend now and in the future. In discussions with Carl, uh, certainly for this year, uh, for the 2020 year, even though there was COVID, uh, there was not a great impact on the tax receipts that we saw, um, just about where we usually are with tax receipts. How that will be impacted in 21 is uncertain, although it doesn't seem like it's as bad as I had originally thought, um, because if it, we're in a relatively affluent community, and uh, as long as people continue to pay their taxes, uh, we're okay. But that has to be watched carefully. There's two tax receipts um, that are sent that are sent by the county each year, one around June, one around uh, mid-December. Um, we can continue to call the um, county people uh, to see if there's any problem with uh, tax receipts that are behind or not being paid. But frankly, they're not very helpful and, and they don't they just don't compile a lot of different information, but we keep trying. So in effect, um, what I did in the, on the spreadsheet is talk about how cash is managed in the town uh, and where we sit. And if you have that, that um, spreadsheet in front of you, for example, at the end of the year in the general fund, we had uh, $419,000 in cash. Uh, in total, for all of the funds, that's Riverboat, MVH, uh, local road and streets, um, parks, that sort of stuff, we had about $3,500,000 in cash. Now, that that that's the money that starts you off during the year. So that um, is constantly replenished, as I said, like the general fund, MBH, PARC, and CCD, which is the capital development fund. You get two, two uh, installments each year of money that comes in via tax receipts. The key is... Um, obviously the budget that's prepared and the uh, cash is is the starting point for every budget you uh, in, in this year for example in 2020 i should say uh, the town ran a an annual deficit on their but, uh, receipts and budgets of about $110,000. And, and some would say, well, you can't be spending more than you, you take in. Well, the purpose of these funds is that they're bank accounts. They're your savings accounts. So when we start out with $419,000 in cash, um, if we spend in that account, just in that account, if we were to spend $25,000 more than we took in, we would end up with $369,000 in cash at the end of the year. So what you see on the spreadsheet on the general 101, we start with 419. This is an estimate for uh, to get to 2021 balances on, on the right-hand column. We say, all right, based on the budgets that we have in place, if we start out with 419000 estimate that we'll receive receipts of about a million one. And um, we, we, we have budgeted uh, disbursements of a million seven, a million seventy one thousand. We should end up with a cash balance of 446. That's good. I mean, we're uh, and it's not to say we can't spend more than than a hundred thousand. We can never go below zero on the, on the cash account because that's what's in the bank. So you can't do it. And it, obviously, you have to adhere to the budgets that you set um, during the during the budget process. That's what the de Department of local, local Government Finance uh, sits on and watches. That's how they set it up. So as long as we're getting receipts in as we expect and we spend as we expect we will end up with a cash, uh, an appropriate cash balance at the end of the year. The reason that we have, and we, we're in good shape. I mean, as of, as of now, we're in good shape uh, for municipality. If you go around and look at the municipalities around the state, you'll find that um, we're in excellent financial condition at this point in time. But that doesn't mean that we can't be, uh, we can't be uh, hurt by foolish spending or some lack of receipts. Um, so if you look at the general fund, once again, we start with 419. 
Uh, we spend about as we as budgeted. We spend about, we spend about twenty thousand less than we take in. We'll end up with a balance of about four forty six. Okay, that's that's basically what this first block on the spreadsheet shows. Over in the other on the uh, and carrying that forward, let's talk about a few of the things that are in there. Um, in the cash, you'll see about halfway down where you see the go the go bond for uh, uh, that's fund number two twelve. Uh, we secured a bond of a million dollars, um, forty one thousand or there had to go for uh, print interest on the bond that is set up. Uh, so we are left to spend with nine hundred fifty nine thousand. Now, that item sits on our balance sheet. Basically, that's what this is, a balance sheet. Um, and now, during 2021, when we, when we uh, pay that, you can see that we did not be budget that receipt, any, any additional receipts, and we didn't budget any disbursements in that, mainly because there was no, uh, we had no idea what we were going to spend for the protection. The gold bond is for the stops. So... We have $959,000 in the bank. We know that we're going to spend that because uh, I think we've already identified that we've got about $350,000 into stop 23. We've got stop 21 to go, which will be probably a little bit more than that, maybe 30% more than that. Um, so that 959 is going to be spent one way or another. So that's how it works. Um, in addition to the go bond, you can see down we have we have the garbage fund. Garbage fund is really not not really has to do with the town finances. It's just a collection that, that goes through. So if you look over in the square on just to the right there, these are the items that are have, will either be carried forward to next year. For example, we didn't spend them. Um, uh, and these are called some of these like Reese Riley is an encumbrance. An encumbrance means you anticipated spending it, but you didn't. So in effect, you've got an artificially high amount of cash. It's sitting in the bank. It's in our bank. But we never incurred the, exp the actual physical expense of paying the bill to Reese Riley. So you can see the next item down is stops 21, 23, and 29. That was 970000 So this box over here are the things that are going to be coming out of cash that, may, that were not uh, anticipated or they were not paid during 2021. And these are going to uh, reduce the cash. So where we started out with an estimated $3,468,000 um, for the things that were on the books, um, the estimated cash balance, you can see we start with that. Now we start taking away those things that were encumbered. In other words, they were not, they were not spent in uh, 2020. So 750,000 is gonna come out, $970,000 comes out. We, we had to pay the additional go bond interest of 32, we will be paying that of 32,000, that was not anticipated. Uh, and, and then it starts with assumptions that I put in here because <clears throat> in our various discussions in the budget committee meeting, these are things that have been talked about uh, that people want to spend or have instituted, but they were never budgeted. A salary survey was not budgeted, um, but it has been um, initiated. So that's $16,000 worth of cash that's going to come out. <clears throat> the next one is, is if there is a salary adjustment an employee salary adjustment. I took a guess at, at I said maybe 3%. Uh, that, will be, that will hit the books at about $30,000. Um, the next one, property tax COVID impact. I, I was being just putting something in here to say, I do think there will be some um, impact of uh, lack of lack of tax receipts. So I put a $50,000 estimate. We had a squad car, um, a deal came up and we have an opportunity to get two squad cars for something, but there's $40,000 that we never budgeted for. That's there. We have pipes going in at 17. Um, I don't know what that's gonna cost, 45,000. Building permits, 
um, reduced revenue. This year, we took in about one hundred and fifty six thousand dollars in building permits. Uh, that's been that was quite a bit more than we've ever taken in before. So I just said we'll probably take in twenty five thousand less this year. Um, Riverboat, that's the one that's been that hit the most. Uh, typically, on a year, we would get a hunt and, or, uh, close to a hundred thousand dollars, ninety to hundred thousand dollars from the Riverboat um, fund. Um, but this year, we only took in about forty seven thousand. And our last payment, our first payment was 28, and our last payment was about 17 or 14 or something like that. Uh, I, I, I anticipate that that's probably going to be 60,000 less because it isn't going to get any better with the riverboat that I, that I can see when I drive by. Legal expense reduction, I added 20,000 back because we'd spent a lot and I, we're, we're seem to be uh, on, a down, on the upward or downward slope for legal expense reduction that we are going to uh, probably spend less. Um, we're getting a CARES Act reimbursement of $37,000. Uh, that was not anticipated or put into the budget. So that, that now is, uh, I added that back. The hydrant expense reduction in, in 2020, it was in there. This year, it's not gonna be in there. So I added back 38,000. Engineering fees. This this engineering fees has to do with um, additional uh, look at look see at uh, paving grants. Um, every time we do a paving grant, um, it costs us money for engineering fees, which are not covered. And then, of course, uh, we have additional fees if we t actually take the grant. Uh, additional shore protection. Uh, I, I don't know. It seems like I, I've got, I didn't update something here, but uh, uh, that should be 200000 I don't know why I've got that in here, uh, but uh, that, this is the money that we uh, uh, could, be spending, could be spending for uh, more shore protection. Um, and, and, and of course, anybody who has any, wants to change any of these or throw anything in or take anything out, let me know. Um, the, the clunker that was not, identified is the next one here is the, um, the SRF escrow for sewers. The entire sewer project, uh, in order to get the SRF funding, uh, now requires us to put a $300,000 um, uh, chunk of change away, which covers both the one year's interest and one year's principal repayment uh, for the, uh, um, uh, the sewer project. Uh, there was an excavator talked about uh, desired, I took out eighty thousand. If if we don't buy that excavator, that eighty thousand goes in. So net net, what we've got is uh, at the end of the, all of this, uh, there's a su substantial number of unbudgeted items. But remember, the first two are ones that over on the left side. There's a, there's a total sitting. Uh, you know, we got our money from. Um, uh, the state for the, the community crossing grant of about seven eighty seven or something like that. We've got about seven fifty left to pay, and stops twenty one, twenty three, and twenty nine. Those are um, uh, covered by the gold bond. So, but but we still have to. Um, oh, I know, I know why that additional short protection is two hundred thousand. That, that's we have to start paying back the two hundred thousand or the the gold bond. Uh, additional short protection down there is two hundred thousand. So we'll be. It's a five year deal, uh, close to a million dollars. So net net, we'll be paying back two hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for additional short protection. That was that was on budget. So what you see then when you come down to the bottom there, this is the estimated cash balance as of um, twelve thirty one twenty twenty one. If all those column items on the right are pro are correct and all of the receipts on the left are, are as as um, as projected so that's what this is what has to be managed this is the purpose of putting out the, the financials each month for people to look and see what they want to do um, uh, are we uh, uh, incurring any unusual variances to budget or not um, so and, and I will just a couple of asides, what I want to make sure everybody understands is that the town is limited in its um, in its ability to incur debt. 
um, we we have the ability to take uh, about three million dollars in debt, of which we've covered at least a million dollars with the GO bond. Um, so there's it is sources of funds that we could tap into if it was necessary, but the repercussions from that have to be um, have to be uh, we have to be aware of them. Um, for example. If we're talking about another community crossing grant fund and we were to go the full boat of a million dollar and we wanted to get the million dollar grant or a million thirty three, we would have to put up uh, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand or three hundred thousand dollars worth of money. We have to pay that to get the to get the, the grant. So that is not included in here. So we have to keep in mind um, it's nice to want to spend stuff. It's nice to want to do things. It has to stay within the budget. And a, a community crossing grant, not in the budget, would require changes, obviously, to reappropriations of things, um, hearings, that, that manner of stuff. So that's, that's the impact of all of this. Um, the, the lesson with grants is that every time you do a grant, it costs us money unless it's a total 100% grant of which we've never been able to qualify for anything like that. Um, so having said that, and, and the last thing I'll say is that just as a matter of course, uh, and I think I act, not I act, but uh, yeah, I act when you go to the I act sessions uh, and, and it's prudent the, 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 they recommend to keep maybe, um, uh, you know, uh, half of your budget or three to six months of your operating expenses in cash in case something comes up. And in the past, you know, let's talk about what might come up. We've got an old community center. Um, we've got a heating cooling system in there that although the three, the three amigos have kept that thing running and going, if something catastrophic were to happen to that, we would have to repair it. And, uh, Immediately, you're probably is something drastic when you're in the hundred thousand dollar range. So that's why you have to keep an, an appropriate balance to handle any kind of emergency. Um, could be, you know, it could be repairs to a truck, uh, repairs to a front loader, that sort of stuff. All those things are extremely expensive to do. Um, we try to keep an, an amount in the account uh, that's that supports that, but you still need to keep an operating balance. Um, it's up to the council to decide how much do they want, what do they want to do. But typically we've tried to keep, we, we, we've never had any trouble keeping a sufficient operating balance. But as you can see from the box on the right, we're starting to get, we're very close to with a million 45 in the bank uh, at the end. This is this is town money, not, not including garbage, not including water, not including those things, just plain town money. Um, there's a substantial amount of of concern uh, for that, but that's that's up to the council to figure that out. Are there any general questions? Pete, I've got a couple. Um, on the unbudgeted cash receipts and disbursements, basically the the items that we can influence. I was just curious about a couple things. It, it seems to me that on your river, okay, so starting at the top, uh, Bill, I know we've made some payments on the CCMG. Is seven fifty the the what we've got left? Is that legit or? That's no, right. It's a, it's a little, it's a little more than that. I I, I gave Pete that number and we I didn't correct it, but I mean it's it's eight hundred thirty four thousand dollars still to come. I think we're fine with 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 Haas, but we've only paid one hundred seventy one thousand dollars, and um, and the and the the contract was for 1.04 million. So you know, the math says that we got 830,000 more to pay. Okay. Uh, got after I paid off Haas, you know, it's going to be about $284,000. It's budgeted and we can pay it, but it's $284,000 more out than in. In other words, once we, cause once we, it, Expel all that money from uh, from from the uh, from from number two twelve or two fifteen. I guess which it is. 
yeah, then then we're then we have to pay for it out of you know, and we budgeted it. That was that that uh, that uh, additional appropriation thing, which will will now be uh, uh, you know be passed forward to twenty twenty one. But as Pete described it, it's you know regardless of whether it's budgeted or not, it's two hundred eighty four thousand dollars more than we have in the bank. So. So, so, so basically, so I've got a few other, I've got a few other questions. Yeah. The but, stock 21 but, and 23 right now, we're at about a half a mil on 21, hopefully maybe a little less. Uh, 23 will be 350. So that's 850. I don't see, and, and that's a good, that uh, stock 23 will be a not to exceed. 29, we have not made a decision to invest anything in 29 yet. Uh, there's talk about it and we haven't finalized that there, there's a chance a good chance i believe that we'll be under that 970 but that's just conjecture and i, and I, I don't want to press the point um the gold bond that was a five-year commitment i didn't see the documents so that that was always to be a five-year commitment pete told me that yesterday i didn't realize yes, that yes yes it's okay 21. we I mean, did we influence that term or that was dictated by them that was dictated by the bond itself, yeah, yeah. But I mean, so we, yeah, so, so, so they it's told going to affect the taxpayer. Yeah, I got that general statement, Bill, but I'm, I'm just curious as to how it got to be five years. I didn't know when we started that process that it was that short of a term. But but that was that's the way that has to be, I guess? Yes, yes. We didn't choose that ourselves? Okay. Yeah. Um, when I, when I come down, you know, obviously some of these things, um, the RISV pipes, that's, there's no way to know what that'll be. We, we, right now we haven't committed to anything on that. Um, but I think it's wise to keep something in there. The riverboat, Pete, I'm a little confused over on your revenue on your 2021 receipts column, you, you've knocked that down to 30, 30,000. And then you also take a sixty thousand dollar hit over here on the unbudgeted. I almost think that's redundant in a in a way. You you've made that adjustment over on your revenues for twenty twenty one. You've knocked it down to thirty, and then you also take sixty out over here. I think that's full counting, isn't it? Uh, you may be right. You may be right. Okay. Um, I'll check that out. I think you are. As, right. I, as I march down through here. Um, the one other thing that funding reserve i know i asked the question and i don't know if you've heard back from carl but is there any way we can do a payment bond or he hasn't answered back yet i've not heard back yet you know just for everybody else's benefit in my industry when you have a payment commitment you can get a bond from a bonding company that says yes if you default and don't pay it the bonding company will pay it and that would involve considerably less outlay than this 300. And I don't know if municipalities can even do that. Nor I think it's I, worth investigating. Nor do I, that's why I've asked Carl. Yeah, I think that's worth investigating. A couple other little things. Um, you know, Stop 24's revenue, I don't believe is reflected in here, is it, Bill? We, we're, we're expecting 100,000 from them. We've already shelled out. That is correct. It, it is, you know, it's paid for. I don't see any more invoices there, so that, so that would be a plus one hundred thousand, assuming that we get the whole grant. Right, and then assuming that we're able to float the or not float, but to initiate the stormwater fund, that'll be another hundred eighty thousand dollar positive impact to our cash through the year if we if we do in a, uh, February through December. So there's two eighty there, and if this if my double counting on the sixty is correct, Pete. Then you got about 340 there that's not reflected. That's a positive impact on what we're doing. If you take your 900,000, roughly speaking, of surplus based on these numbers that you've shown us, and put that 340 on there, um, you know you're up around a million two. So again, I I'm not trying to discount what you're giving us, and I I appreciate it very much all the efforts. Um, I think. No, no, and, 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 that, and that's good. That's what's supposed to be done. That's that's what the purpose of doing this is for, to, to develop as clear a picture as possible of where we are. Um, right. Now, so, I, I, let me, let's talk about the stormwater fund. Um, is, is that going to be purely a revenue? Is well, 
Is right, going, now, you, right now, the things that we wanted to, our justification for coming up with a stormwater fee were a couple of things. One was we've got all these brand new storm structures from the CCMG money, in addition to all the other storm structures that need help during the year. So we thought we needed to get one of these uh, hydro excavators. That's what you're showing as your $80,000 expenditure on your, your unbudgeted uh, disbursements. The other issue is that we've always got continuing stormwater situations, including the RISV situation, where we're, we're not doing correct we're not doing the right thing. So we're putting stormwater into the lake that's untreated, and we're we're dealing with puddles all over the place and some street improvements that need to happen relative to stormwater. So that's why we wanted to have some revenue to offset some of those expenses that we've typically had to take out of the street budget or wherever Bill was was able to try to come up with some funding for those kinds of things. But Tom's it's kind of a whack-a-mole sort of thing. Tom's been forced, Tom Dahl's been forced to do things on a shoestring sometimes when if we had some money in the bank specifically for stormwater, we could do some, you know, some better project type things. There are lots of private, semi quasi private public uh, stormwater lines that go down to the lake, similar to RISVs that really need to be corrected. So, so that's what the motivation was for that. And, and in terms of whether it's totally revenue, Pete, in this particular year, if we look at $15 a month times 1100 households, times 12 months, you're looking at about 180 in receipts, 180,000. And I'm just showing that as a receipt because simply because you've showed that excavator as a negative. So I, I look at that 180 as generally would be an addition to what we're looking at here. And, and I think uh, from what you say, it sounds right. The question would be the timing. When, is this something that would be collected on the tax bill? Is this something that would be collected on the water bill? Well, it, we're going to use right now. The, the proposal is to have water, sorry, the water bills starting in February. Yeah. So I think that 180 is a realistic number if that's what we're able to do. We're, the water department's trying to figure out whether they can do it on the water bill as it's currently uh, printed. But if we're able to, then it'll just be a $15 hit on the water bill every month for everybody. And and what. I, so what is the, the legal basis of this? Is this is this something that has to be approved by some legal entity like somebody at the state or is this something we could just, is this a valid utility fee? Yeah, listen, listen in tomorrow night, Pete, because we're cause basically what, what we've got is a second reading of the approval of the ordinance to form a stormwater utility and and the second reading of the ordinance to set the fee at fifteen dollars so the the meeting we have the notice made it into the paper so we're so we we will have a a, a public hearing and then succeeded by the reading of those two ordinances and um, you know and then that will be a legal stormwater utility and it, it is a it is a state there are other stormwater utilities, but I think we, I think Carl borrowed some of the wording from, from other municipalities to, uh, to make our stormwater utility. Uh, okay, so, so, so what, what I'm getting at, is in, in effect, that's money, that's current money we'll be collecting this year and we'll be able to spend this year. That's correct. Okay. Yes. But just, just to reiterate what Bill's saying, you know, we did a little homework on this thing and found out we we're able to do this. It's similar to the water board in some respects. It's, it's, we're going we're gonna to use the town council as the board. We're not initiating a new board and there won't be any board payments to board members or any of that sort of thing. So anything we bring in, we'll be able to use to, to do so. Okay, that's good. I'll, I'll adjust all this. Yeah, the one thing that, that for everybody, I, you know, to me, I'd rather be conservative on the on the riverboat. You know, we did collect, I think, fifty six thousand dollars this year, um, but uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen next year? So that that money was usually just a tad over a hundred thousand dollars. It just magically appeared twice a year in uh, June and December. So it's right, uh, and, and the only caveat is that our last our first payment was. 38 and the last payment was 17, um, right. indicating a tremendous drop off in their money. So again, again, but I think you're double counting there. You, you, you've no, no, I, 
Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Okay. I'm just well, the counting might not be bad if we could. I just, but I, I agree with what Don is saying. But, but yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. That's that's. I'm glad that was the, the, in the general. Then, one. just you know, again, I'm I'm relatively green and, and apologize for some of these things that I'm asking. But you know, to, to have let's say my numbers are right and we're adding a 340 onto your nine, Pete, you're about one million two. So that's cash reserves at the end of 2021, assuming everything that we've we've talked about and, and adjusted by what I discussed. And, and obviously things can happen that can increase or decrease that. You mentioned in your cover letter to the information you sent to us that you know we want to always have at a minimum, I think you said 600 or something was what maybe the LG. Yeah, that, that, that's the number I use. But but if we if we anticipate a million three, are, I mean, I, I don't know what the historical for the town is going way back, but in my mind, if I've got a $2 million budget and I've got a million three in the bank, I'm not doing too bad. So I'm, I, I don't think this is doom and gloom from what I'm looking at unless we get some major impacts that we're not foreseeing. Right. And you're exactly right. And we, we, you know, we, we decided to keep a hefty cash balance for something like storm protection. Um, you know, here we had a million dollars off the top that we have to we have to allow for. So those that if somebody wants to have less, that's fine. Uh, all we're trying to do is present a position and an idea, and it's up to the council to decide what they want to do. Well, one of the things, Pete, that I I I thought about afterwards uh, was that it may turn out that the twenty five thousand dollars that you've Removed from revenue on the on the uh, building permits might be too low. I mean, it, it might it, it might shrink uh, in a, to a greater degree uh, than what we've had. I mean, we did we did have to put more expense in because Larry was you know living on the on the lake during the time where we were trying to save houses and everything else. But you know, so his expenses went up also, but. You know, my my feeling on it is is in prior years we had we hadn't even touched a hundred thousand dollars in in, uh, in building permit revenue. So it may turn out that that uh, we have to think rethink that again. And I, I agree. It, it, you're you're yeah. very you're very yeah. right. And that that's why you sub, you supply on a monthly basis the, fi the monthly financials, and that's where it can be tracked how much yeah. is being spent in each of the items. So one, that, thing, one thing Pete and I discussed, uh, Bill, and I know you and he has, have discussed this as well. When we get our monthly cash reports, we don't show the positives in the budget column so that the variances make sense. And, and I don't know how difficult that is. And I know this, I know you're no, I, it's fine. I, this is that, that I told Pete that we'll, we'll, we'll get on that from a management point of view, it, you know, it's harder. I mean, I don't see it. We don't manage very well the revenue because I, you know, and so it, it, it didn't, it doesn't seem as important to me as the expense side, but if, if, uh, you know, we can we can do all of that. So it's not not something that has to be. I mean, typically, you know, whether we're going to get nine thousand dollars worth of building permit fees or not, I have little control over that. But it, if it's helpful to the council, then that's that's fine. Nobody has asked for it before, but you have, and so we'll do it. Well, I I, I don't want to be a problem for you. I, I think if we're if we're going to try to if we if we make the conscious decision that our reserves at the end of 2021 will be somewhere around a million or a million three or whatever it winds up at. And we're nervous about that. Yeah. Then I think it's, it proved it, it's probably does us well to yeah. try to keep track of it, at least on a quarterly or something. So that no, no, it, it's, it's, you it's, it's not that difficult to do. It's, it, we can do it. So that's fine. Yeah. Particularly when after the, after the tax receipts come in, then, then at least, you know, we're able to say, okay, our presumptions on, or our assumptions on, impacts to revenue based on COVID and everything else, then we've got a good handle on it. We can make better yeah, decisions. No, I, I, I don't disagree, so I'm fine with that. All right. Pete, can I, can I, can I ask one question, Pete? Sure. On, I just wanted to get clarity in my head. With that GoFundMe bond, isn't that all, all going to be paid back 
by the real estate taxes through the citizens. So will we have an expense or am I not understanding that? No, the, the gold bond is us. <laughs> that's, that's coming out of our, it's not being paid back. It's coming out of the operating funds, put it that way. But where, then what, what was the, the, the bond or something that we did that was supposed to be coming out of the real estate taxes that was a, an addition to the uh, real estate tax? Joe? They're going to be, you know, just like we had when when uh, when we started this uh, saga, you know, we were getting five pieces on our on our receipts: general, MVH, park, and CCD, and the repayment of the bond for the town hall, and that got paid off in 2016. And so, since 2016, we've only been getting the four pieces. And starting in 2021, we'll start taxing people. And so we'll again, now it, may, it may not appear any different. I mean, it may, it may improve, increase your taxes, but it may not appear any different on your tax bill. But I will be getting, you know, I'll be receiving from, from LaPorte County a five-piece check instead of a four-piece check. But will, will that be extra money for the town? No, it would just be repaying that million dollars that is going out the window when we are paying whoever's fixing up our shoreline. Well, that, that's what, I'm sorry. That's what I was just asking, that that money will be extra money to the town to pay off the fixing of, of the uh, bus stops, correct? Yes. So, Joe, it's an in and out sort of thing. If you were looking at yes. the spreadsheet, no, you'd no, understand no. it better there the money's in the budget as a revenue item based on the bond proceeds and it's in the budget for an expenditure based on our rough estimates of what we're going to spend on the lakefront so it's an in and out sort of thing yeah that yeah that, that's what i was thinking i was just trying to make sure i grasped that because i see pete on the on the other side on the right side he has an additional minus 200 and i don't know where that if that would be an extra 200 that's the payment. So you've got an annual payment, Joe. We're on a five-year payment. Right. That's what that's what Pete's showing there. Not only, right. yeah. But but the but the payment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so stupid. But the payment is definitely going to come out of the real estate taxes from the 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 town. Correct. I mean, it seems to me that if we're collecting real estate taxes for this GoFundMe bond, are we collecting 100% of the million, use the million dollars? Eventually we'll collect 100% of the million dollars. So therefore the town through the real estate taxes is paying for the GoFundMe bond. Is that is that a way to say it or are you saying not? It, it, won't, it won't come out of real estate taxes. And I don't believe it'll hit 2021 because of the way we it won't be on the tax bill this year it might be and if it no, is no no uh, i'm sorry i was 22 i yeah i forgot we changed years so it's 2022 is when we start and and that's okay. because we have all this stuff of uh, uh how do you phrase it uh, pay this year uh, for last year or something like that yeah yeah so even like we're going to be reestablishing the CCD fund, which will generate $25,000 more a year. But when we reestablish it, it, won't, it will, although we do it in first half of 21, it won't hit the tax bill still 22. So, so that's the reason. In future years, it'll be better, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Pete, one quick question for you. At one point, if I'm not mistaken, there was some correspondence that went flying around about whether the hydrant rental should be rather than a, a user fee that it should be on the taxes do you recall that conversation uh, yeah i do and i thought it was going to be on the on the water bill that's that's the intent right now is to be on the water bill but i thought there was some concern that maybe it needed to be on the taxes in lieu of on the water bill i, I can't remember I, i've not heard anything about that um what i recall on that situation is that if in fact we put it on the tax bill, you'd have to wait 
you know, a year and a half or two years for the town to be reimbursed because how they do that. So we felt on the water bill, you'd get your money right away. No, that makes sense. I, I just, I didn't know if there was some requirement that it was on the taxes. If it's not, it doesn't bother me. No, it was just, you know, a cash flow item, I guess. We'll get our money sooner. The town will get its money sooner by putting it on the water bill. Yeah. And the idea behind that and the stormwater is that we're able, that those are the only ways, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but that's the only way we can get any additional revenue with the, with the caps and the circuit breakers, is it, right? And yeah, unless we break into houses. Yeah, so I think we're okay. <laughs> and so yeah, no, I mean, that's it. So, Please Chief is you know, listening to you, Bill. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, this is more, uh, more uh, computer thing, but if they do find the line that, that uh, Mary Lou said they were searching for at the last night's council meeting to put the $15 stormwater utility fee on there. I'm hoping that if we pass the, the hydrant charge also that it could, it could go from, you know, from 15 to 20 or whatever it is. And it could just still be one line just saying, I mean, we can, we can break it out and put it into the, you know, the system could break it out and put it into the separate funds but well we, i don't think we can do that because the water department keeps the hydrant fee and the town gets reimbursed for the uh, storm i think it has to be two fine. separate well, lines so it doesn't really matter though because because then it just stays in so then you just keep the money and it stays i'm just saying that that if we have a problem with just printing a you know a post a postcard we we don't need two lines. We, because uh, I mean, you know, you don't care how the how the system breaks it out. I mean, right now when you write a check, some of it goes for for reimbursement for the town for the for the water employees uh, payroll, and some of the money goes into goes into the garbage fund. You know, it, uh, While we're on the subject of the water bill, um, Laurel, I think you told me at one point that the the bond or the, the long-term payment for the water improvements that were made a few years back was going to uh, end in 2027. Is that what you told me? It, it's correct. Okay. And just a small thing. Um, I see in the engineering fees, we have $20,000. I think last night we decided to spend 35,000. So that, that probably needs to be changed. Um, I, I do think that uh, this is a good discussion that we probably need to have on a quarterly basis. Probably the best way to do that is to have that discussion at, at this meeting quarterly, and then for us to send a report to the town council. That way the town council can you know, base their decisions on expenditures based on their philosophy as to how much they think we ought to have in our cash balance and related to, uh, does that sound reasonable to everybody? Uh, I think that's probably, and then Pete, you had said 60% of revenues is what we probably, uh, is what they recommend as cash balance. And so I, on the revenues, uh, in terms of the, on our budget, the total budget is how much as, as we have listed, I don't see a total there. Do we, do we have a total for that just to get some idea of, and I know, I know we're not sure whether that balance is 908 or, uh, 1.2 million, uh, but I guess, so we, we would basically add up 2021 receipts, I'm sorry, 2021 budget, and that 60% of that is what we ought to have for cash. Is that what AIM is recommending, or IACT, or whatever they call themselves? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, just looking at the list of funds here, of course, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to maintain it for garbage, we wouldn't have to maintain it for this uh, new stormwater thing. Uh, that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll just make a quick estimate. If you, if you run those columns, Bob, just for your info, that 2021 receipts column adds up to two million one roughly, and your disbursements for 2021 adds up to um, roughly two million one as well. So it's kind of a balance. I guess you could say it's almost balanced in terms of disbursements and receipts according to these projections. Mm -hmm year for the whole year for 2021. We don't have a big deficit the way I see it. We don't have a big deficit projected for the outlays for the year with the exception of these optional things over there to the right that Pete's talking about. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'll redo this spreadsheet and send it out. Okay. I guess the comfort level on the one million in the bank is what we the council needs to talk about, Bob. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You know, everybody's got a philosophy as to how much money they want to have in the bank, and so. Right, and also I think talking with Carl is to learn what our uh, debt ratio should be. Um, yeah. I know that's something with the water department, since we really don't have assets, we have to keep our bank accounts at a certain level for our debt ratio. Do those, do those water department balances figure into what we're talking about at all, Pete? I, 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 I know I asked, uh, Mary Lou got me the budget for the, you know, the projected budget for the year for the water department, but as far as cash balances that they have, and then, um, debt that they have, do those figure into what we're talking about? Should the council be aware of those and be talking about those in conjunction with what we're doing on these numbers? Well, yeah, but, but they should be, they're separate from this. What's they're that? not, they're not merged. The, the, right. town, the town's monies and the water department's monies are separate. There are different um, requirements for the water department. Um, and those probably should be reviewed. Um, balances are for, Balances are in the water department, which are some I consider pretty hefty. Uh, balances are supposed to only be maintained for operating expenses and and uh, any kind of balance necessary to support debt. So, and where that number, where that percentage is, um, somebody's going to have to look at that. But uh, yeah, Carl, just recently we talked about that. And um, he was feeling comfortable where our where we were at for our debt ratio. I guess my point is, should the council be aware of it all in conjunction? If if we're if we're making this decision about whether we're comfortable with a million, a million two, or whatever it winds up at, should we also be taking a look at the water balances so we understand it and we can put an imprimatur on it or put our stamp on it as well? I, I get. I know that there's a separation between the two entities, but I also somewhat feel that the council ought to be a little more aware of what's going on, just so we're we're all in the same boat together. There, I I I think it's very well to do that. Um, I think equally important, or maybe more important, is on the town side. Uh, the council, each council member, has to be more involved in what's going on in the budget and understanding and reviewing the expenses that come out each month. Um, that, that, that's just a key thing because, uh, one account that gets out of whack. I mean, a couple of years ago, the legal stuff got, got out of joint, but fortunately we had enough monies in the bank to cover it all. So the important thing is to understand this process, appreciate the fact that cash is king in the world of municipalities and that we only have a, a limited debt. Uh, ability to take on debt, uh, you know, with with the gold bond, we're we've eaten in, into a million. Fortune for for many years, we had no we had no debt at all, um, other than paying back for the town hall, and uh, so that that's basically a lesson that everybody needs to to take to heart. Understand those financials. Um, Do you think that water department debt is in, needs to be included in that calculation on the town's overall debt? No, no, it's not. It's separate. It's it, it's totally separate. It's all looked at as water department and town. Maybe the way to handle this as far as educating the town council is, you know, we have these quarterly meetings where we discuss this and maybe instead of a report, maybe the town council ought to just watch a recording of this meeting. Then they would be, you know, and they'd have a copy of, of, of this document that we have here, the spreadsheet, and that, and then any questions they have, they could, you know, address to Bill or Pete or John, somebody who understands these things better than I do. I, I agree. Anything they can do to understand what's going on, that's, that's better for everybody. Bill, would you anticipate being able to talk? I, I, I know revenues only come in infrequently. Would it be better to do a quarterly budget review than monthly? Would that ease your situation a little bit? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I think I think the, the quarterly review would be 
would be would be good. I mean, we're going to enter into the system because that's what we have, and I think it would be more confusing not to. We're going to enter. You know, the revenue is going to be the annual revenue that we're expecting. So you're right. I don't think it's as meaningful doing it month by month. I think quarterly, but quarterly is would be meaningful. So yeah, I I think I think that's that's the way to go. So you I know what, what you suggested, what about, Bob. Yeah, what I would what I would suggest is uh, why don't I send an email? I'm going to send Pete's spreadsheet to the two town council members who are not here, along with suggesting that they watch the recording uh, of this meeting, uh, and so they can have a good understanding of where the budget's at. And we can that that process starts now. Uh, it'll get a little more cumbersome when we can't do Zoom meetings, but uh, at least for right now, let's take advantage of the fact that we've got the Zoom. And also refer to the, you know, the year end, the year end uh, 2020 uh, financials. You know, that, that that's where the game starts. Um, and I'll just repeat that typically uh, all of the funds, um, the, uh, funds that come in from these different sources are, are typically very close every year. And that even from, even from, um, real estate tax um, so it, 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 understanding what happened in 2020 is important to see what's going to happen in 2021 plus the exceptional items that we talked about here and those year-end financials pete you sent out also uh bill sent them out yeah okay, okay. and it's the same ones that he sends to the council the, the year-end stuff yeah and I, I did send out the, uh, uh, the the gateway system, which I will be entering into the uh, into the civic system, which would be a little more easy to to read. I think you're more familiar with that, so yeah. So we'll get that. And and it, it's worthwhile too for for everybody to look at the gateway, the access to the gateway system. Um, the but for example. Um, you get to look at what other communities are spending. You can look at any community in LaPorte County. You can look at any um, uh, financial unit. You can look at salaries for individuals, total compensation for everybody in the, in, in the town as well as any other town. It's just very worthwhile to take a, a, a tour of what's available in that system. Um, uh, the expenditures, the uh, and, and begin to read about the financial structure that, that drives the state. The state itself, uh, we complain about DLGF, but the state itself is fiscally sound, and uh, there are reserves and there are quirks in it. But basically, it's a good it's a good system, and there's money available um, for different programs. CCG has been wonderful for the time. We were very fortunate to be able to participate in two rounds of that. So, uh, any other questions on this? Okay. One quick thing, just just for future reference. I mean, we we'll have to make a decision. Assuming Haas is able to get the CCMG application in on time and and we get a, an award, that'll be part of that first quarter discussion. We'll have to decide what, if any, we want to spend if if we did get an award and that'll be, you know, determined, the amount will be determined by where we feel we are after that first quarter adjustment on revenues. And right. And, and that, uh, now remember the, the, the real estate tax has come in in June and December. So we won't be getting another, um, chunk of real estate tax in till June. And it, and it's important to keep track of uh, if there, you know, that's why somebody like Carl is, is important to identify what what is the uh, tax receipt situation at the county level. Um, all I can say. Just, yeah, just we, won't, we wouldn't we wouldn't ex let this past year and, and I think in the last two two CCMG evolutions, we, we've not expended the, the funds until basically the fourth quarter. Isn't that correct, Bill? Yeah. yeah, we we would have to authorize the bidding process mid summer, Pete. By then, we'd know we were at least we'd know where we were at with June receipts, I would think, and then you know then we'd have to make that decision about how much to spend out of the award, assuming there is one. That's a good point. Very good point. Timing is everything. 
Okay. One, one, one question on CCMG, uh, just for your, you may remember John and I don't, and, and I should, because that was one of the things that I thought was the f fabulous thing we did the first year getting into that three for one. Um, don't we have to decide how many streets we're going to do by the time we finish this? I mean, if we're submitting something by the end of, of January, don't we have to pick how much we're asking for? Because I think that's the way we did it before. So that's what that's what that's what the expenditure to Haas is, Bill. And you know, keep in mind they've already done quite a bit of the homework. In other words, yeah. when they did the initial survey of the streets, that money's already been expended and that work has already been done. So now what they do is, you know, you it, for lack of a better term, you you rate them one to five or something. Your worst one being one, your best ones being fives. I don't know if that's the right ordinal, but yeah, anyway. No. You know, you you do your one. They won't let you do your your fives until you've done your ones. Let's say, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he makes a list for this application this year with whatever's left. If they're, all the ones are done, then we go to twos, and then we're able to choose, pick and choose how much of that we spend come June. So his projection will probably be in that million dollar range again. And then if they award us that much, we can say, okay, we're only going to do. 300,000 of it. So that's our choice. In, in, and then we have to give back whatever money we don't spend. That's John, right. does, okay. John, does, does the crack seal um, function, is that covered under, um, whatchamacallit, under? Um, I, I've, I've not seen it used in CCMG uh, arena, Pete. Um, I will tell you from a, from a practical standpoint, it's not a very good solution. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of technical reasons why it's not a good solution. I, I think I'd rather see us spend three hundred thousand and not try to do something on the cheap. Crack seal is a is a very short term. It's it's designed for certain applications. Uh, it basically just it's like a paint job. It's not. It well, not what I, the, I, under, I understand that, but but one of the recommendations when we went through and, and I, maybe I read it wrong. One of the recommendations we went through when we did the first CCM or the CCG program was that after we paved after we paved four miles, the next year and years following, we should immediately be doing crack seal. That's what I'm talking about. I know it's not for the old roads. I know that's no good, but so I, you, you're the road expert. Just I, I, if, if, the luxury of getting the kind of dollars we've gotten is that we've been doing a better application. We've done two layers of asphalt in most of these applications, which is unheard of. Usually Tom would just do a resurface and, and we've milled down, which we didn't do, you know, 10 years ago, we just used to overlay roads. That's why a lot of times you have ponds and puddles and things off the edges of the roads because we weren't able to afford doing it correctly. With the CCMG money, we've, we've done a much better job in terms of engineering and application, which means you really wouldn't need crack filling when you put a two lift application down. We've actually also used a better product. We, you know, when, when Walsh and Kelly got it that two years ago, we engineered through Haas's efforts and, and, and Walsh and Kelly's, we engineered the product to use what's called polymer asphalt, which is much better for the application that we have here in our town with the ups and downs and the way the streets are. So, so we anticipate not having to need something like crack filling, first of all, as opposed to a regular, just a quick one and a half inch overlay sort of a thing. So I, we can look at it, Pete. I, I wouldn't get too concerned about, you know, the timing of it, uh, the cost of that product, you know, over a phased in sort of a thing we could probably handle on our own without the CCMG. I, I'd, I'd advise to use the CCMG the way we've been using it. And then if we decide we need to do any crack film, we, we'll keep an eye on those things. Uh, but I don't, I don't anticipate needing it anytime soon. And I wouldn't want to use those dollars for that right now. That, that's excellent. There's nothing like having an expert involved in this stuff. Okay. Um, all right. I, I, I don't know what other things we can talk about. Um, on the on the topic list does anybody have any particular topics they want to bring up uh one thing i did want to mention you know we're, we're going to present to the town council in february a new fire department contract 
since the revenues from Doolin are gone and the contract that we're under currently is about uh, over 10 years old, we're going to propose an increase in the, the town's expenditure to the fire department. Right now we're at 28 a year, 28,000. We make seven thousand four seven thousand dollar quarterly payments. We'd like to see that bump up to somewhere between 35 and 40. So you know, that has to be discussed with the town council, but that'd be an anticipatory sort of thing for the budget finance uh, if that passes. Okay, well, that, uh, as you, as everybody's aware, that would add to the right-hand column on this spreadsheet. So um, those are the kind of, now, let me also state that it, it's very important that we have a, a very structured budget process when we go into start the 2022 budget process. And that means everybody needs to understand what the potential uh, pitfalls are in, in the budget process. And the, and the pitfalls are, as you can see here on that spreadsheet I sent, the pitfalls are out on the right. Those are the things that we have to be aware of. And, and uh, Laurel usually handles the police department, works with the, the chief or the marshal, whatever you call it. Um, John, you'd be working with MVH. Um, we need, if, if this community center needs any kind of uh, capital or any kind of improvements, those have to be added. So it's just, it's just keep, keep the antenna up for that kind of stuff and people have to be assigned to the process. Okay. Quick, one, quick, one, one last quick comment, I'm sorry. The water hydrant, I know Laurel, we had originally talked about having a separate uh, hearing about that water hydrant fee 250 or whatever it was going to be a month on the water bill. Do we need to incorporate that on this hearing on tomorrow night or can we or is it too late or do we need to even worry about that at this point? Well, it was my understanding that Carol was going to do both public hearings at one time. Well, that's not possible. We, you know, Okay. We have to announce, I mean, the Unless, unless there's another both, I mean, the meeting tomorrow was announced as a public hearing, and there was no mention of of hydrants in the in that. So we got so it's got to be a separate issue, and it's got to go in the paper, and it's got to be okay. Illegal. I'll get I'll get in touch with Carl. Yeah, that's fine. That's well, can we make sure that happens? Because we've been talking about this for quite a while. Right. Yep. I'll yep. call him today. Yeah. So we just need to schedule another hearing, right, Bill? Yeah, yeah, yes. It's you know, it's not that big a deal with co with uh, Zoom. It doesn't. It's almost easier to assemble the group, you know, and everything. So yeah, but yeah, we have to. Do that. Uh, I, in, in regard to hearings, um, I'll be working with Carl, Carl to upgrade to reestablish the five percent rate on CCD, um, and that will require another hearing. Um, but that's not scheduled yet. We've got to get the whole process done by April 1. So there'll be something going on first quarter. Could we maybe combine those two hearings? That, that I don't know. I'll ask Carl, Carl no. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm done. Everybody have a good week. Okay. All right. Bye, yeah, everybody. Thanks, guys.